Hi everyone, my name is Rachel Zeiler and I'm a PhD student in the Industrial Hygiene Program here at the University of Cincinnati. For this presentation, I'm going to talk about the Early Detection of Degenerative Disorders and Innovative Solutions Laboratory, or the EDI Lab, that's been led by Dr. Amit Bhattacharya for the past 40 years. So just as an outline for this presentation, I'm going to go over the overall lab focus, the tests we use in the lab, um, some of our current studies that we're working on, and what we're planning for the future. As the name describes, the EDI lab focuses on the early detection of degenerative disorders by observing functional outcomes after exposure to physical and chemical risk factors. Most of the research done in the EDI lab has been on working populations, but some of our past and current studies have worked with children with early life heavy metal exposure and patients with degenerative disorders such as Parkinson's disease and osteoporosis. In doing this research, our goal has been to identify susceptible populations so preventative or control measures can be taken. With this, we hope to protect workers in susceptible populations, lower healthcare costs, and decrease disparities in healthcare delivery. Uh, the first test I'm going to talk about is bone shock absorption, or BSA. BSA is a non-invasive tool used to measure the energy absorption capability of the combined bone and musculature system. Um, and I have a short video of how that test is done. So as you can see during the BSA testing, the subject taps their heel on the force platform um, and the sensors attached below and above the knee measure vibration energy transmitted through the leg. In 2004, BSA technology was used to observe preclinical signs of fractures in osteoporosis patients aged 65 to 85. Um, as you can see on the graph on the left, osteoporosis patients with a history of fractures had significantly higher damping values at the below knee and upper back position. Um, so this shows that those with a history of fractures had less damping capability of their combined bone and musculature system. BSA technology has also been used to study patients with early life lead exposure, um, and we hope to use it more in the future. We also use static sway testing to assess postural balance. A piezoresistive force platform is used to measure ground reaction forces and moments. A custom software developed by our lab uses those forces and moments to calculate slight changes in movement of the center of pressure under the subject's feet during static tests. Our lab and others have shown evidence that exposure to neurotoxic chemicals and physical risk factors such as shift work and heat stress disrupts postural balance and increases the risk of falls. So we use sway testing to measure postural instability during static tasks. During static testing, we use a variety of different test conditions to challenge the three sensory afferents, which are vision, proprioception, and the vestibular system. For example, on the picture, in the picture on the right, um, the test subject is standing on a four-inch foam pad used to challenge the vestibular system and proprioception of the lower body. After our data is collected, we use another custom software developed by our lab to measure displacement, acceleration, and velocity in three directions. Um, and I have a short video of that on the next slide. Um, this video is from one of our recent studies on firefighters. And in this video, the firefighter is standing on one leg with his eyes closed to test his proprioceptive system and balance without using his vision. Um, the plot on the right is the real-time change in center of pressure during this test. So as you can see, as the firefighter starts um, to sway and lose balance, his center of pressure moves to the outer edges of his stability boundary, um, which is defined by his footprints. Um, ideally, during this test, the subject will stay as close to the stability center line and have very little sway. We also use an instrumented timed up and go test, or ITUG, to assess dynamic balance. During these tests, subjects are equipped with five wearable sensors that contain a 3D accelerometer and gyroscope to measure linear acceleration and angular velocity. During this test, subjects stand from a seated position, walk seven meters around a cone, and then walk seven meters back. Um, so this figure at the bottom is a little sketch of what that looks like. Um, so they start in a chair, stand, walk seven meters around this cone here, and then seven meters back and sit down. Um, we also use a dual task like asking the subject to continuously subtract three from a given number. This allows us to evaluate gait function during a mentally stimulating task. Using these three tests, Dr. Bhattacharya and the EDI lab have, has received funding 
um, from a variety of different organizations, including NIHS, NIOSH, the University of Cincinnati, and the Ohio Federal Research Network to study neuromotor outcomes in a variety of different populations over the past 40 years. Uh, for the rest of this presentation, I'm going to focus on some of our ongoing studies um, and some preliminary results from those studies. The first study is the Cincinnati-led study, or CLS. Um, just as a little background, the Cincinnati-led study is the longest continuously active prospective study of lead exposure and child development and child health in the world. The study initially started in 1979 and has focused on mostly central nervous system outcomes such as neurobehavioral development, cognitive function, delinquency, criminality, and brain volume and activation. Dr. Bhattacharya and his team began studying neuromotor development and maturation of balance um, of the CLS children in 1988. In the early studies, children with higher blood lead levels displayed more movement of their center of pressure during static balance testing, and their, um, the maturation of balance as they aged was much lower comp compared to those with lower blood lead levels. In 2014, Dr. Bhattacharya and Dr. Dietrich began a study to assess postural sway of the Cincinnati-led study um, cohort as adults that we were able to compare to their childhood sway testing. So this figure on the right shows how static balance matured um, for those with low blood lead levels or quartile one, which is this um, blue line with circles. And then um, versus those with high blood lead levels or quartile four, which is this um, dotted black line with triangles. Um, so even though children with higher blood lead levels had delayed maturation of postural balance throughout childhood, they were able to catch up and reach a similar sway area when they were tested as adults. Um, their sway area values were also just slightly above the average sway area for our control population, which has no known lead exposure. Um, we also used bone shock absorption and dynamic bal balance testing in this study, but we're still analyzing those results. Um, another study that we're currently finishing up is looking at the impact of shift work and chronic occupational heat exposure on cognitive function and functional outcomes. For this study, we chose to target firefighters because of their extended shift hours and chronic exposure to environmental and metabolic heat. This study consisted of three parts. Um, the first was a functional MRI done and analyzed by Dr. Kim Cecil and her team at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. The second consisted of the collection of blood samples that are being analyzed in another lab here at UC um, to measure innate and adaptive immune markers and stress-related indica indicators such as lymphocytes, heat shock protein, and orexin. In our lab, we analyzed um, postural stability using static sway and dynamic balance testing. We're still analyzing our results, but our preliminary findings show evidence that there is a relationship between years spent as a firefighter and angular velocity while turning. Um, so these plots on the right show that after about 15 years of firefighting, our firefighters were beginning to become less stable and more erratic in their gait and while making turns. Um, this is a pilot study with only 22 subjects, but this has been a really exciting finding for us so far. The last study I'm going to talk about is the Communities Actively Researching Exposure Study, or CARES. Um, CARES is a study on children with environmental manganese exposure in Marietta, Ohio. Manganese is known to delay brain development, impact behavior, decrease learning ability and memory, and adversely impact or affect um, neuromotor function. The study has also assessed static and dynamic balance, um, but we used an obstacle walk for the dynamic tests, like shown in this video here. Um, so this is similar to our other gait tasks, but the subject is asked to step over an obstacle that is about mid-shin height. Um, Using the obstacle walk, we're able to evaluate gait function and perception of an obstacle that may lead to a fall. In the future, we would like to continue working with firefighters um, and use wearable sensor technology and questionnaire-based research to non-invasively measure sleep quality, quality of life, and immune function. If you'd like to mo know more, um, this link at the top goes to our lab website with more information on current and pre previous studies. Um, you can also contact Dr. Bhattacharya by phone or email. Thank you for attending Career Workshop.